I have to say, out of all my years working with food, this is the most bizarre thing I have ever held. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Edible History. I'm your host, Hannah Hart, here to talk to you about tasty foods as we travel through time. Ah, hamburger, the American pride and joy. But how American is it really? Has a hamburger always been a fast food? Is a hamburger even from Hamburg? And why is it called a hamburger when there's no ham in it? All these questions have answers, but I don't know them. So we're gonna get those answers from somebody else. Please join me in welcoming hamburger professor himself, David Michaels. Hi. David, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. So let's start with the basics. First things first, why is it called a hamburger when there's no ham? Okay, so nobody really knows that. When it started, it was leftovers. It was strips of beef. They were basically put together with breadcrumbs and seasoned and salt. And it was meant to be for a cheap meal for travelers. In Texas, they say that that's where the hamburger was born as we know it today. Somebody that owned a diner there, his wife, baked sourdough bread and put the meat between the buns. So the hamburger is a pretty American invention. But if we're focusing on the meat patty specifically, I mean I mean, how far back have people been mincing meat with various seasonings? So people originally think it's from Hamburg, but recently there's been a claim that it came from Roman times, and they invented the burger. There was a recipe book called Apicius, written by an unknown author, about a dish of ground meat, pepper, pine nuts, and fish sauce called garum. And it came about from a demand for street food in that particular region. So it always was kind of a grab and go food either way. It's only modern times that have turned the meat patty into something that has bread and all, you know, all the food groups together. Correct. Frankly, I'm excited to go take a crack at making this Roman thing. So today, we're gonna to be making the oldest meat patty recipe known to man. The origin of all meat patties. The... Aliter Isisia Aumentada. The recipe we're making today comes from the De Re Coquinaria, which is the art of cooking and is the oldest known cookbook to date. The Aliter Isisia Aumentada is made of pork, hearts of winter wheat, wine, pepper, broth, berries, crushed nuts, and call. So people have been gabbing about how much they love food since way back in the day. Wow. The first step is to turn my pork meat into pulp. Okay, step number one, cover these puppies. You know, not a pro tip. Don't shut your eyes when you're cutting meat. Just in general. Okay, hey, this kind of looks like a patty to me. I think that that is great, and I definitely don't have to do it two more times. Okay, I do. They say don't play with your food, and I say, doesn't this look like a brain? Soon our creation will live. So we survived mincing our meat, now we're gonna transfer it into this bowl. I'm gonna take these gloves off, wash my hands, and then come back for more. Next, we're gonna take our pulpy pork and grind it together with hearts of winter wheat. Now, because this recipe is ye old, it doesn't actually call for portioning. Everything is to taste, but obviously we're working with raw meat, so I'm not gonna be doing any tasting. We're gonna be doing a lot of guessing here, and that's really all history is. Now, I don't think they had meat grinders, so I think we're gonna have to grind the meat together with this by hand. See? That looks like a hearty portion of meat flesh. Heart of winter wheat. Now, pummel your pulp! So the heart of winter wheat will be acting as our binding agent. Whoa! I'm not gonna lie, this grinds beautifully. <laughs> Now that I'm done grinding the pork together with the hearts of winter wheat, I'm gonna mix it all back together. Together, together, together. Now I think this looks pretty moist, but the recipe tells us to dilute it with wine. And I can't help but wonder if that's because they weren't always working with like the freshest meat. 
Wow, the hearts of winter wheat have absorbed the wine instantly. Hmm. So we're gonna take some fresh peppers, grind them up. Along with the pepper, the recipe also calls for adding broth. Now our best guess is by broth, they meant what is more similar to fish sauce. Now to add our crushed berries. Yum, nice and chunky and vaguely dirty looking. Next, crushed pine nuts. Voila. The next step I've been dreading the most. The recipe tells us to shape the force meat into small rolls. If you know what they mean by force meat, please let me know, because I have no idea. Oh, hey, are you the force meat? Can't wait to shape you into a small roll. Now, we have no gauge for how the size actually is, so I'm gonna do what I would assume, which is like a handful, like a hearty handful of force meat. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. What the hell is that? Our last step before cooking these is to wrap the force meat rolls in call. Call is the lacy fat that lines the organs. That's what I'm holding. I have to say, out of all my years working with food, this is the most bizarre thing I have ever held. Just gonna take some of this and wrap my force meat roll right up. Yay, edible history. Here we have our four prehistoric patties ready for frying. We're gonna be frying these at about a medium heat. It doesn't say how to fry it, it just says fry and serve. I'm both repulsed and entranced. This is so weird. And here we have it, the origin of the meat patty. Look at this beautiful, vaguely baked potato looking thing. Doesn't it make you just wanna chow down? Me neither. Good news is though, I don't have to, cause I don't eat pork. So I'm forcing our director, Matt, to eat it. Matt, come here. Hello. Are you excited about this? Uh, I'm nervous. Yeah? Yeah, a little bit. To be as historically accurate as possible, you actually have to eat it served solo. Ready to go? Yeah, go for it. Here we go. Honestly, it's not bad. It's like really, really juicy. The flavor is surprisingly subtle. Really? There's nothing really bad about it. Well, feel free to just keep eating it. I'll take the whole thing with me. Okay. Thank you. Bye. I think today we've learned not to judge a book or a burger by its cover. No matter how odd the experience of making that was and how odd it was to look at it, turns out it tasted pretty good. It all comes down to what's on the inside, which in this case was a series of crushed nuts, peppers, and berries. Who oh knew? Thanks for watching this episode of Edible History. What will we make next? Gotta watch and find out.